A lot of you are dismissing Redbubble because, well, all I'm ever going to sell is stickers. But let me tell you guys something. That's all I thought I was going to sell as well. But when you get a sticker sale, it helps that design rank. And over time, that design will also start selling on other products. And that's exactly what happened to me. My very first $100 month on Redbubble was mostly sticker sales. So they do add up, but they open the door for you to sell on other products. And one strategy that really, really helped me was learning how to make shape-based designs. It helped me quickly and easily create a lot of different things. And it's a great foundation for learning any software, whether it's Canva, Photoshop, or Illustrator. And I'm gonna show you how easy it is to create this little cute pink kitty in Canva. All right, let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is select everything and shrink it down. And I'm gonna move this down here just for reference point. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just build the framework of the kitty cat. So I'm gonna do the body, the ears, and the feet. And that's all done with the circle tool. So if I just type in circle, I'll get this. And I'm gonna click that and I'm gonna choose this pink color that I've been using. And what I did is I just dragged this out like this till I got this sort of oval shape. Now to make the ears, I'm gonna use a trick that I showed in another video where you hold down Option on a Mac, Alt on Windows, and you simply just drag and you get a copy of it. And so now I can size this down. Let's move it up so we get it out the way. And then I'm gonna use the rotation here to just turn it like that. And then I wanna make a copy of this and I'm gonna hold down Option again and make another copy. Now, one thing I've noticed about Canva, their flip tool or their flip option does not work like some of the other programs like Photoshop or Illustrator where you can just flip something to the other side. It's a little unique. If you notice, this is at 60 degrees, right? So for the other one to be the exact opposite, it needs to add up to 180 degrees. So that means this one needs to be at 120. And now I know that they are at the right angle. All right, let's do the feet. We're gonna grab another circle. It's already the right color, so we're gonna just drag this down and move this down there like that. We're gonna use our trick, and there we go. So now we have the body pretty much lined up. I don't think the feet are perfect, but you know, you get the idea. So let's do the inside of the ears. Now, if you wanted the ears to be a little pointier, I guess I could have used a triangle. Probably would have been better than the ellipse, but that's okay. So for the inside of the ears, we're just gonna make a copy of this shape here. And I'm gonna make it a different color. Let's make it purple. And I want it to be just a little bit smaller. Something like that. There we go. So we're gonna make a copy of it. Now, this is behind it. All you do is right click, bring to front, and there we go. So remember, we have to make this, what, what did I say, 120? So there we have our ears. Now let's do the eyes. We're gonna make those black. Move it over, copy, do another. So easy. Now the nose, that's the one that's gonna be a little tricky. So I'm gonna do that last. And so let's do the inside of the eye, the little eyeball. We're gonna copy it, change it to white. Size this down, down just a little bit. And we're gonna copy this. And I, and I like to make it a little quirky by making the other eyeball a little bit lower just to make it fun. You know how cartoon animals are. Now for the whiskers, what I did is I did a search for line and I took a line and let's come down here so it's easier to work, make it a little smaller. So I'm gonna make three lines. So I'm gonna use my copy trick, just like that. And I'm gonna take the outer line and rotate it about mm, eight degrees that way. And I'm gonna take the bottom line and rotate it eight degrees the other way. So it'll be negative eight. So you get my point. Now this is where the group function is very, very helpful. So you select everything, go up to group, and now it will allow these shapes to move together. So let's change the color to black. And we're gonna size this down a little bit. And we're going to move it over here like that. And then we're gonna copy this whole group and we're gonna flip it around and it's gotta be right at 180 so we know that it's even with the other. And there we go. 
So now let's do the nose. Now for the nose and mouth, I had to get a little creative here. So I typed in curve into the search box and it brought me this little doohickey right here. So we're gonna create this. Now I'm going to flip this horizontally and then I'm gonna rotate it up to about 90 degrees. And I'm gonna make a copy of this with our copy trick. And now I'm gonna flip it vertically. So I'm gonna move this right about like that. And now I'm gonna grab a triangle for the nose part. And it's basically just going to be an upside down triangle. So right at 180. And we're gonna size this down. And we're gonna put it over there just like that. So let's select everything here and we wanna size this down like this. Now we want all this to be black. For some reason I can't select them all. I have to do them all one at a time. Not sure why. So there we go. Another trick too, if you don't want your background stuff to start moving around, I can click this right here and click the lock and it'll lock it. So when I select this, I don't move my background shape. So let's move that like that. Everything is pretty centered and there we go. I don't have the placement exactly the same as before, but this is close enough. Now for the tail, I just did a search for line and this little squirrely thing came up. So I'm gonna move this out the way, gonna make it a little bit bigger and I'm gonna make it the same color as the cat and I'm going to turn it so it's right at 90 degrees and I'm just gonna move it like that. It's a little big, something like that. And there we go. So we just created a cartoon kitty cat using nothing but the free shapes in Canva. Now for those of you who are thinking none of this kind of stuff sells, if you start typing in cute animal on Redbubble, they will autocomplete for you. Now the autocomplete doesn't work as well as it does on Amazon, but it does sort of work. And when you see an autocomplete on Redbubble, you know it's because something is selling well. So when I started typing in cute and cute animals already completed, and it says, look, in stickers, because that's what people are buying on Redbubble. And when you search, you notice they even give you suggestions of keywords that people tend to search for or things that are selling well. And if you scroll through here, you will see a ton of very, very simple shape based art like we just created because these kinds of things sell. Now, the key is obviously since there are 500,000, I mean, there are half a million results here, you're going to have to narrow these ideas down a bit. And that's why I do so many videos on ways to niche down. I did it with the turtle video because you can't just put up a cute kitty cat in 2020 and expect it to sell. You've got to narrow it down some kind of way. Maybe make the cute kitty cat say something about one of the candidates for the election. You know what I mean? You got to find a way to merge those animals with something else. That's the key to selling. So once you start selling stickers, then those designs rank better and you'll notice, oh, look, it also sold on a mug. Oh, look, now it's selling on a metal print. So stickers, these little cutesy little designs can be the entryway into selling other things. So once you learn how to do this, you can not only sell things like stickers on Redbubble, but you can also learn to make more complex things as well. So don't sleep on those stickers, you guys. Good luck and I'll talk to you all later.